is the uh, motion and one dimension worksheet. Um, so go ahead and do that. Uh, make sure you, you uh, submit your work, take a picture of your work and submit that. Uh, let's see, I think I put, I just want to double check real quick on the due date. I think I pushed it back because we have some more pressing things to get done. Yeah, so I pushed it back to October 8th. So the, um, the lab that we were working on is now due October 8th, okay? Any questions about like any of that stuff? We, are we good? Okay, cool. So um, here's what we're doing today. So we're gonna finish lecturing and I just feel awful because um, like we have been flying and we're still flying and I feel like we're like I feel like we're behind just for how many like how where we're at in a year and what we need to be done for this test so I just I just don't know uh like what else to do but we have to push on and we have to get this lecture in and we have to try to figure out problems and we have to figure out like we haven't even talked about multiple choice problems or anything like that so sucks but after this we'll just be doing practice stuff and uh kind of going from here so uh bear with me we're gonna just, we're gonna talk about so um yeah just hang so um the two new students just hang after class today and i can uh what's it called um talk to you guys about what what needs to be done okay uh, so let's go ahead and get into this it's projectile motion so we've done one-dimensional motion where you're going X only and Y only right I know we really just really hit Y only really really quick but you're gonna get it in this too so uh, let's go ahead and look at it so projectile motion <laughs> look stay away from Tiffany that's my advice new kids Stay away from Tiffany. <laughs> All right. So projectile motion, motion in the X, motion in the Y. So now instead of just moving in the X or just moving in the Y, we're going to be able to move the same in both. Okay. So here we go. Here's my question to you. So <clears throat> I want you to think about this. And if you've seen Mythbusters, just don't say the answer. Um, now. It says, you have two identical bullets. One is shot from a gun aimed parallel to the ground. The other is dropped from the same height as a gun's barrel the instant the bullet leaves the barrel. Which bullet hits the ground first? Mm -hmm. All right, that's supposed to be TWO, two identical bullets. So, in other words, I have a gun, right? I'm pointing it out directly horizontal, okay? At the, and I have two bullets. One's in the gun and one I have in my hand. So, at the instant that the bullet leaves the end of the gun, you're gonna drop the other bullet at the same height. And I'm pointing it directly horizontal, all right? Directly horizontal, parallel to the ground, all right? Which bullet is going to hit the ground first? I'll give you three options, all right? The uh, option A is the bullet that's fired will hit the ground first. Option B is, the bullet that is dropped, and option C is they hit the ground at exactly the same time. Go ahead, think about it, type your answer in the chat. Which bullet hits the ground first? Fired, dropped, or they hit that same time? Think about it for a second. I'm gonna grab a drink of water real quick. I'll be right back. So type your answers in the chat. I don't see any answers being typed. Let's see what we got here. Okay, I see drop, drop, dropped, dropped. Okay, so everybody, everybody agrees drop one. So that's kind of what everybody agrees with. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Uh, let's see who said that. Let's see. Uh, Rena, why do you say drop? Explain why you thought drop will hit the ground first. Um, because like. If it's being shot out of the gun, then I don't know. I feel like it'll be in the air longer. 
Okay. I mean, that makes sense, right? You shoot something out and you're just dropping it. It's just going straight down, right? That kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Anybody think anything different? Or everybody agrees to drop? Everybody's all in on dropped. I mean, it kind of makes sense. Okay. All right. So nobody else thinks anything different. Well, let's, let's take a look here. Let's actually look at something here. You guys ever watch Mythbusters? Or have seen it, Mythbusters? <laughs> yeah, okay, good. So they actually did this. And let's see. So let's take a look at what, what actually happens. Exactly the same distance from the ground, each released at exact same second. Except one more is dropped to the ground, the other is fired from a gun. All right, so you guys got it wrong. I'll try to fix that. So as you can see, yes, uh, all right. in a, you know, in that situation, there was, um, you know, things they couldn't account for like air resistance and stuff like that, but it was such a small, uh, you know, difference in the time that the human eye couldn't make it out. So they are confirming that each bullet is going to hit the ground at the same exact time. Okay. So how, why that happens is because this. After the gun is fired, what is the only thing acting on the bullets? Gravity. Gravity. Gravity is the only thing acting on those bullets. And the key to the problem was that the gun was pointed directly horizontal. So it was directly horizontal. Okay? Now, I want you to, want to ask this question. So if I tilted the gun up a little bit, which one would hit the ground first? 
The one I dropped or the one I fired? Dropped. The one I dropped, right? Because now, instead of it just going out horizontal and falling at the same rate, it has some velocity upwards, okay? So it'd stay longer. So what if I did this? What if I tilted it down a little bit? Which one would hit the ground first? One fired. The one I fired, right? Okay, does that make sense? So, the key to this is understanding that gravity, all right, acts on everything exactly the same. And what we're going to do here is we're going to break two-dimensional motion into two components. In other words, one-dimensional motion in the X, one-dimensional motion in the Y. So we're going to basically, you know, we're going to break down two-dimensional motion to one-dimensional motion in both directions, okay? So the key is, when it's shot out horizontally, it's not, it doesn't have any initial velocity in the y, in the y direction. Well, when you drop something, it doesn't have any initial velocity in the y, right? If we drop something, I can say my v naught is zero. Well, if I direct something out and shoot it horizontally, I can say my v naught in the y direction is equal to zero. So therefore, it'll fall at the same exact rate. My question is this, in the PowerPoint, you see the PowerPoint? What do you think those red line lines indicate? Any ideas? Separation in what? Any ideas on that one? Those red lines that keep popping up. Do, 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 do. Nobody has any idea what they what they what they represent? Well, how about this? As you drop something, it speeds up. Everybody agree with that? Like you drop something, it speeds up. So what do you notice about the distance between each ball when it appears? It gets bigger, right? So what do you think that uh, line could represent? Velocity? Not velocity. Distance? Wait, no. uh, well, I can see the distance. I can see that it's spacing out. There's only like one more option for variables. Acceleration? No, not ex you, because they're the same. What? Speed? No, speed and velocity, same thing. I'll give you a hint. Time. Time. Time, nice. Charades. I'm nice at charades. Yeah, time. <laughs> time, right? So as it falls, if we look at each second or each time interval, those balls are at the same height because they fall because of gravity, because they both have the same initial velocity in the y direction. They, even though they were sh one has, has velocity in the x direction, it wasn't shot up or down, therefore it's gonna fall at the same rate, and at the same interval of time, it'll be at the same height. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, oh, let me go back, sorry. So what we need to do is this. So like I said, um, like I said, we're gonna be decomposing two-dimensional motion into one-dimensional motion in the X and in the Y direction. So what we're gonna be given here, in the first year beginning, we talked about vectors, right? So how do we, how do we denote uh, direction in one-dimensional motion? What do we, how can we say left and right in one-dimensional motion? Positive and negative. Positive and negative. Very good. So one way was positive, one way was negative. But now we're going to be dealing with stuff that goes like this, right? So how we denote direction here is by angles, right? So we, we're going to use angles here. So what you're going to do, all right? And this is just like, I'm going to give you this. This is a like step by step. Like if you are given a velocity, so this is gonna be your velocity vector. So you're gonna get you're gonna get a velocity initial. Right? That's V oh well, they have it there. Why did I write there? All right. This is gonna be your velocity initial. And instead of saying like positive or negative or it's up or down or left or right, it's gonna say, um, let's say for example, uh, a soccer ball was kicked at 10 meters per second at an angle of 15 degrees above the horizontal. Does that make sense to you? So I know it's going 15 and it's 20 degrees above the horizontal. So it's gonna take off at that angle, 
okay? So what we need to do is we cannot work with that in two dimensions. We need to break it down into one dimensional motion. And how we do that is by vector addition and vectors, uh, uh, not vector addition, yeah, vector addition. So if I look at this, this would be my velocity, in other words, 20 meters per second at my angle, so that's my direction. What I want to know is how fast is that going in the x direction only, and how fast is that going in the y direction only? So do you see how this is going to be? This is going to be velocity initial in the y, and this is going to be velocity initial in the x direction. Do you see what I'm doing here? So saying that it goes at 20 meters per second, or 15 meters per second at 20 degrees, it's going to move in the x direction at a certain speed. Even though it's moving like this, it's still going to, it's going to still travel distance in the X at a certain speed, not at 15 meters per second, but at some speed. It's also going to go up and down, like vertically, okay? We're only going to look at X motion and Y motion separately here. So that's why we got to break this up. So it's, it's a basic triangle, right? So I know this angle, if I want to use this side, so I have this. This is, this is going to represent my velocity initial right there, right? That whole vector because that's at the angle. So if I want to find this one, I have adjacent, because I know this, so this is going to be adjacent. This is going to be opposite. So if I have adjacent and hypotenuse, so that's so co that's cosine, so watch what I do here. Cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So I plug in here, cosine of the angle theta equals uh, adjacent is velocity initial in the x, hypotenuse is velocity initial, okay? So if I want to know what the velocity initial in the x direction is only, I would multiply by VO, multiply by VO, and I'll get velocity initial in the x direction is equal to velocity initial, the overall velocity, times cosine of theta. This is important right there. That is not on your equation sheet, but you're going to need to know that. So I'd probably jot that down and just make sure. Now, you could always derive it like I just did, like just no trig, know how to do trig, but it's, it's very easy, like an easy equation to remember, okay? Now, when looking at this, if I want to know velocity initial in the y, I do the same thing. I got opposite, and I know hypotenuse, so I want to use sine. So sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. I plug in sine theta equals opposite is VOY, hypotenuse is VO. So I, I multiply by VO, I get VOY. Velocity initial in the y direction is VO sine, uh, oh, video's in the way, sine theta. This is your other one. So these are the two equations that are going to break up your initial velocity into velocity only in the y direction, only in the y, and only in the x direction. And then what you can do is you can use those velocities just like we were using in one dimensional motion to solve the problem. But again, you're gonna have to piece together this problem a little bit differently than what we've been doing. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of show you this as we go. Any questions on what I was doing on this screen? Any questions on what I was doing? Okay, so remember these, these equations, because I'm going to have you do this. So let's say I got this. Let's say my initial velocity is 40 meters per second, and I have an angle of 35 degrees. I want you to calculate my velocity initial in the x and my velocity initial in the y. Can you do that for me, please? Remember, velocity initial in the x is velocity initial cosine theta, and this is velocity initial in the y, which is equal to velocity initial sine theta. So go ahead. I'm going to give you a minute here to, to solve that.
Okay, when you get an answer for a velocity initial in the X, type it in the chat. Actually, let me do it too. I don't know the answer. So it's 40. Velocity initial in the X direction. When you get an answer for that, type that in the chat. Yep, 32.7 meters per second, very good. So again, all you're doing here is plugging in. I would plug in my, this is my initial velocity, so I go 40 times cosine of 35. And I would get, what do I get, 32.7. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so what that means is as this thing is traveling like this, if I was just looking to how it traveled in the X direction, just where it was on the X direction, it would be like it's traveling at 32 meters per second in the X direction only, okay? So now what I want you to do is calculate your velocity initial in the Y direction. Get my VOY for me, please. Not Y. Type in the chat when you get it. Yeah, there you go, 22.9, that's what I got too. So if you're struggling here, I got VO is 40, sine 35, and then you get 22.9 meters per second, okay? So here's the thing, that is, so watching this thing go like this, would be the same, so it's gonna be the same as if you threw something straight up at this velocity here. The initial velocity here would have to be 22.9 if you would throw something straight up. And what that would do is be the same as if you had 40 meters per second at 35 degrees. Could, is anybody having any issues? I know the concept is difficult right now, but is anybody having any difficulty uh, with the calculation of VOX and VOY. Is that pretty straightforward? Are we okay with that? Like you can just plug those numbers in. I understand you might be struggling with the concept, but again, we're just getting into it. Any, a little, what do you mean a little? Like you, I got it a little or I need a little more help. A little difficulty at doing the actual calculation. All right. So, okay. So, what you will be given. So, this is what. So, what you'll be given is this. This is going to be your velocity. So how the problem would read. Okay. How the problem, like an actual problem. I know this is just a, a triangle right here. You're like, why is it? Why is it a triangle? I don't understand how that relates to velocity. So, how the problem would read is say like, okay, I got somebody throwing the football. I'm going to throw the football at 40 meters per second. Right. So that's the velocity that it leaves my hand with, okay? So it leaves at 40 meters per second, and I've thrown it at 35 degrees. Because think about it, you can throw it flat, you can throw it a little bit, and as you go higher, that angle changes. Does that make sense to you guys? Like, I can change the direction by, you know, aiming differently. So what the problem is going to give you is say, oh, this guy throws a football at 40 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees. So the first thing we have to do is I'm going to um, decompose that, and that's going to be, so the 40 is the velocity that it leaves its hand with. So in other words, velocity initial, and this is the angle, the angle theta of where I'm throwing it out. What I'm calculating is just VOX, velocity initial in the X, velocity initial in the Y. And all you have to do for the calculation, I understand you might be, a little bit fuzzy on why we're doing it or stuff like that, just be able to calculate it right now and we'll get to the rest. So the velocity initial goes in there and then the angle goes in there. And then whatever you get is your velocity initial in the X direction. And then same thing over here. It's gonna go in there and then it's gonna go in there. And then that's how you, that's how you do it. And you just type in your calculator like that, okay? 
And you guys got the right answers. Yep, yep, yep. All right. All right, so again, I'm gonna give you a chance here. I'll help you a little bit. X is horizontal, so X is only in the X. Y is vertically. So that's in motion in the X direction, in motion in the Y direction. So think about this. So as I increase, so the question was, when you're plugging in the numbers, what is the difference between Y and X? So if I increase my angle, so if I throw it more straight up, okay, think about this. It's going to have more velocity in the Y direction than in the X direction. Does that make sense? Because I'm throwing it at a steeper angle. If I threw it more flat, like a smaller angle, I'm throwing it more in the X direction than in the Y, but it still has both. Does that, you know, does that, does that help? Does that make sense? So we're breaking up this two-dimensional motion. Cause you can, you can throw a ball different ways. You can throw it like this, right? So we can throw it like real shallow and it goes like this. We can throw it, you know, medium and it goes like that. And then we can throw it really, really high and it goes like that. So what we're looking at is how it travels only in the X and only in the Y, even though it's traveling in two dimensions. So what I want you to do is I want you to find velocity initial in the X, velocity initial in the Y for this right here. On good answers, check your VOY. I'll give you a hint. When you get an answer for VOX or VOY, type it in the chat. Charlotte, that's good for VOX. Good. Good. VOX is 10. Good job. Now do your VOY. Careful to what I did here. Look what I'm doing here. I'm setting this way to be positive, this way to be negative, this way to be positive, this way to be negative. Charlotte, careful with your answer in VOY. I agree with the number, but why is it wrong? I meant to put negative sign. Whoops. Okay, good. Yep, negative 17. Do you see, does everybody see that? So if I throw something down and over, my velocity in the Y is right there. My velocity in the X is right there. Well, which way is this pointing? This is pointing positive and this is pointing down. So it's going to be negative and positive. So that's why I got a positive 10 and a negative 17.32. Is everybody okay with, with getting that? Like, can you just get the numbers? You might still be confused of what it actually means. That's fine. But as long as you can get the numbers, that's, oh, we're going to keep building on this. Everybody okay? Is only VOY ever going to be negative? Will VOX always be positive? How can you do this? So my X would be this way now, and my Y would be positive. So you just got to think about which way it, it's actually going. So I start here. Okay, it's traveling in this direction in the X, so it has to be positive. Does that make sense? So you just got to kind of look at which way the arrows would point. Yeah. Okay. And have the answer? Nope, I guess not. All right. So this is basically what we're doing. It's basically vector addition. It's, so you, you're just not adding the numbers. You need to take into account the angles. All right. 
Oh, I don't like this question. I don't really need it. <sighs> All right. Yeah, this is, that's just vector addition here. All right. So we talked about this in the first chapter, uh, what, what uh, velocity is, right? So uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what a vector is. So this is a vector because it has magnitude and direction. So this is your vectors, which is displacement, velocity, acceleration. A scalar is just a number. We don't really mess with these too much, right? Just a number. We're really working with these right here. Those are our three terms here, okay? So again, these are your examples. That's traveling in two dimensions. Um, so here is what's important, okay? So I want you to think about this. You have this object, it's traveling here. We broke it down into velocity in the X and velocity in the Y, okay? Which direction does gravity point? The acceleration of the acceleration vector of gravity points which way? Down. Down. It always points down. So is gravity going to affect your vertical motion or your horizontal motion? Vertical. It's going to affect your vertical motion, okay? So, and because this is an introduction class, we're not going to take an, an effect, uh, what's it called? air resistance. So I want you to think about this. If I throw something, is there anything affecting it once I release it in the X direction? If I'm negating air resistance, I agree. If there's air resistance, there's going to be something slowing it down, right? But if I release something and we negate air resistance, is there anything acting in the X direction? Yes or no? Um, no. Right? There's so there is so if that means there's no force, that means there's no acceleration. So when you're in the x direction, the only equation that you're going to use is this one right here. The basic definition of velocity is delta x. So in other words, it'd be delta x equals v o x t. So whatever you find as the initial velocity is going to stay as the initial velocity the entire time it travels in that projectile's path. Okay. So this is the only equation you're going to use with that. So when you get variables, you're always, so we made a list for last problems. You're going to have two lists here. You're going to have lists for X direction and Y direction variables. My question, think about to the uh, introduction question, the bullets one, which variable stays the same, do you think, for Y and X direction? Which variable can you use on both? the same. Which variable? Time. Kenny, did you say time? Yes. Yes. Time. Time is the one that you can put in both sections and use it both ways. All right. You can't use velocity initial in the X with Y equation. That does not work. Okay. So in the y direction, you're going to use, you know, your normal equations. These are the ones you got from the last PowerPoint, right? The VF equals VI plus AT. Well, your A here is going to be nine, you know, negative 9.8. Your, your, VO, your VO is going to be VOY because you're only in the y direction, all right? Does this make sense, everybody? That there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. Okay. Now, here's what I want you to notice. Okay. What do you notice about the velocity in the X direction? It literally says it on there. Constant. It's very good. It's constant, right? Do you see how each time you get a velocity like this, you can break it up into velocity in the X, velocity in the Y, velocity in the X, velocity in the Y, right? And if you notice, the velocity in the X direction stays the same the entire time, 
right? Because that's what we said. There's no acceleration in the x direction. So once I release it, it's staying the same. What do you notice about the y direction? It changes. It changes, right? So it goes like a normal thing, right? So just like you throw something up and down, we talked about this. It slows down and then speeds back up. So look at the velocity in the y. Oh, it gets smaller, it gets smaller. At the top, remember, this is what we said last time, that if you throw something up at the highest point, the velocity is zero. So the velocity in the y direction at this point is zero. Is the overall velocity at this point zero? Yes or no? Is the overall velocity at the highest point in projectile motion zero? No. No, why? Because uh, X is still going. It's still moving in the X direction. Very good. It's always moving in the X direction. Okay? Then, if you notice this, what happens? It increases in the Y direction, but X still stays the same because gravity is the only thing affecting it. Okay? If we did the same thing here, we looked at the same height, what did I say the velocities would be at the same height last time? Anybody remember? Opposite. Opposite and what? So if I at the same height, so I'm looking at the same height right here. What are my velocities going to be? I agree it's going to be opposite, right? Because one's up, one's down. What else do I know about them? It's the same velocity, but in different directions. Same velocity. This is the same velocity, but in different directions. So we're kind of piecing this together, right? So we know some things about this. We know that dx, dox always stays the same. It's always there. It's always the same at any point. If they would ask you at any point, what's the velocity in the x direction, you would say, whatever I calculate v or x to be. Okay? I know this. At the highest point, my velocity initial in the x direction, or uh, I'm sorry, my velocity in the y direction is zero. So at the highest point, my velocity in the y direction is zero. I know this. If they would ask me at the same height what the velocities would be, it would be the same, but in the opposite direction. Do you see the kind of piece, we're piecing this together here, okay? Any questions about anything I've said about this on this slide? Okay. Okay, this is what I said. It's uh, the acceleration of the is gravity free fall. It's, it's exactly like one dimensional motion uh, it's just in free fall. There's no acceleration in the x direction, so acceleration is zero. All right? So, I think this says, yeah. The initial velocity, we're breaking it into two parts, just like I showed you before. Initial velocity in the x direction, initial velocity in the y direction. Initial velocity in the x direction is vi cosine, and then vi. Sign. So if we look at this, okay, this is a graph of a projectile in motion. This one is velocity x, this is velocity in the y. Can someone tell me why? Well, let me scratch this out because then you can see it. <laughs> can somebody tell me why I get a straight line for the x graph? Like why, am I, why is my graph like this? It's constant. Right, so we said it stays at a constant speed, so I represent the graph like this as a constant speed. Why is my velocity in the y direction a straight line, or a, a, uh, an angled line? Anybody know that? It's slowing down. Is it slowing down the whole time? Constant rate of it. <laughs> What's, 
Okay, I agree something's cosmic, uh, constant. What has a constant rate? The acceleration. The acceleration, okay. And what causes acceleration in the y direction? Gravity. Gravity, very good. So gravity is causing the acceleration. That's why the velocity changes at a constant rate. So that means the velocity is changing at a constant rate. How do we find acceleration from a velocity versus time graph? Does anybody remember? How would I get how would I get acceleration from a velocity versus time graph? <coughs> Slope. Slope of the line. Very good. Was that Charlotte? Yeah. Yes, very good. It's the slope of the line. And what do you notice about the slope of the line? It's constant. Because it's going to be, if you calculate that slope, it's going to be 9.8, right? That's what it will. It's going to be negative 9.8. That's what gravity is. Here's my question. Where on the graph represents the ball reaching its highest point? Where on the graph does it, does it represent the ball reaching its highest point? Which graph? The Y graph. We can't really tell anything from the X because it just stays the same, right? We can't tell anything from that. We, we can just tell the velocity initial. So on the Y graph down here. Time is zero. What? Time, when time is zero. When time is zero. So you're saying right here, it's at its highest point. Yeah. I disagree. Anybody? When y equals zero? So on the x-intercept? Very good. So the x-intercept, who's that? Was that Tyler? Yeah. Tyler, why do you choose the x-intercept here? Or in other words, whenever uh, y was zero? Because when it's at its highest point, the velocity is zero, and then it starts falling back down. Very good. The velocity, so what we said was, at the highest point, our velocity here in the y direction is zero. How do we represent a zero velocity? Well, this is the y, the y value here is velocity in the y. This means it's reached its highest point because at this point, the velocity in the y direction is zero. Very good. Um, so what does this part of the graph mean? Why is it below the x-axis here? Negative. What is negative? Acceleration. Uh, I agree with acceleration is negative, but that is not the reason why the graph is below here. Why is the graph below the x-axis here? What's happening? Coming back down. It's coming back down, so therefore, what is negative? Velocity, right? So at this point, think about it. This is the point... Well, you, if you throw something straight up, isn't the point that you release it the fastest it's ever going to be going in the positive direction? That should make sense, right? As gravity, it decreases the velocity, decreases the velocity. Oh, at this point, I've reached the highest point. Now it's going to speed up. Its speed's going to increase, but in the negative direction. Do you see the difference here? Is that, does that make sense on the graph? All right, hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. All right. But do you see how we can describe projectile motion? So motion in two dimension with just X because we know it's constant. And then we look at just Y and we can describe it with just those ones instead of looking at it both ways. Mm. Let's pause on that one. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it right now. We're trying to move too fast. All right. So again, things you can remember. So remember that velocity at the top, velocity in the y direction is zero. The time it takes to go up, let's say time it takes to go is four seconds. I know that if it goes to the same height, it's going to take another four seconds to get here. Does that make sense? So the time it takes to go up, is the same it takes to go down if you're catching it at the same height. Now, if you do something like this where you have like a building and you kick a ball off, the time's not going to be the same because you're not catching it at the same height. You see the difference there? Like this time is going to be different. You can't do that. 
But if you're catching it at the same height, the time it takes to go up is the same time it takes to go down. All right? So we've talked about when we throw something up or down, we're breaking into X and the Y. So what we have to do now is, what if I throw something out directly horizontal? It's going to eventually curve down, right? It's like just, like, just like the bullet, right? The bullet shot out and it ended up curving down. So that's still projectile motion, even though I didn't give it an initial velocity at an angle. I'm throwing it directly horizontal. So let me ask you this. If I throw something directly horizontal, the instant I, it leaves my hand, is it moving up and down? The instant I, it leaves my hand for that split second, is it moving up or down, yes or no? Uh, yes, what? I heard somebody say something. Nobody's typing in the chat, yes or no? Uh, yes, or yes, because of gravity, or well, it, it is going to move because of gravity, but that instant, so when I release it, the, the, the millisecond I release it, okay, it's only moving horizontally, so it's not moving up or down yet. So let me ask you this. So if I throw something out directly horizontal, what do you think my initial velocity in Y is going to be? What is my VOY going to equal if I throw something out directly horizontal? What do you think my VOY is going to equal? AJ, very good. Zero. Zero. So know this, that... Where is it at? If you see this word, horizontal, in a problem, it rolls off a horizontal table, you throw something out horizontal, right? You have to remember that VOY equals zero. That it, you're not going to be able to use equations for this because you have to know that if it says, okay, I roll something off a horizontal table. When it leaves its table, its initial velocity in the y direction is zero. If I throw something out directly horizontal, its initial velocity in the y direction is zero. Okay? Now, let me ask you this. Let's say I throw something out directly horizontal at five meters per second. I'm throwing it out at five meters per second directly horizontal. What is my initial velocity in the X direction going to be? I'm throwing something out directly horizontal. It's leaving my hand at five meters per second. What is my initial velocity in the X direction? V O X. Two points. Charlotte, were you going to say something? I said five. Five. Very good. It's five. Because think about it. What direction is that five meters per second in? Oh, it's in the X. It's in the horizontal direction. So you're, so anytime you read horizontal, that means the initial velocity is going to be all in the X direction, and velocity initial is going to be in the Y or The velocity initial in the Y direction is going to be zero. Now, as time goes on, what's going to happen? The velocity initial in the X is going to stay the same. It's staying the same. But velocity initial in Y is going to increase negatively, right? It's going to speed up going down. Okay? So let's try, let's try a problem here. Let's try a problem. I'm going I'm to I'm help you through this real quick here, uh, the first one here. So it says Bob Beeman's record-breaking long jump. Ignore that 8.9 meters. I don't know why I put that there in the 1968 Olympics resulted from an initial velocity of 9.5 meters per second at an angle of 40 degrees to the horizontal. So what I want you to do right now, make sure you can do this, is, and we've already practiced this, so I'm not, I'm not going to do this. Calculate your VOX and your VOY for me, please, using these numbers. I want VOX, VOY. Calculate them. When you get them, type them in the chat, please.
Anybody got VOX? That's what I got. All right, I'll write that in there. I got 7.28. All right, go ahead and do VOI. Looks good, looks good. Can everybody get those? Is everybody okay getting those numbers? That should be straightforward. I gave you the equations for that. Just plug those numbers in there. Any questions on that? Okay, so let's think about this. This guy's jumping, right? So his path's gonna look like this. I agree with that when he jumps out, his path's gonna, I mean, that's crappy drawn, but that's what it's gonna, actually, let me just, <laughs> that's really bad drawn. Sorry. His path's gonna look like that. Everybody okay with that? So what this problem is doing is this. It wants to know how long he takes to go to his highest point, right? Time up. I wanna know the time it takes to go up. So what you have to ask yourself is this. Which direction and variables are you use? Y direction or X direction? Well, if you are confused on that, what you can do is, since you know this is the only equation you have in the X direction, right? That's the only one you have. You can always start by listing what you know in the X direction only and see if you can use this equation. If you can't use it, then you have to use y variables here. Does that, do you understand what I'm saying? So you can start by looking in the x direction. If you can't use this equation because you don't have enough information, then you have to use the y direction. So here's the thing. Once you find vix and viy, you never use these numbers again. So don't use them. You're not using vo and uh, angle. So if I look here, what do I know in the X direction right now? The only thing I know is VOX is 7.28. Do I know anything about delta X to this point where he goes at the highest? I don't know anything about that, right? So I have to use Y equations here, uh, Y variables. So my question is this, I need to describe his motion from start to the highest point. In other words, the time it takes to go up. Can somebody tell me a variable I know in the y direction from this point here to this point here? Well, let me ask you this. What always, what is always in the y direction? What always takes place in the y direction? Gravity, very good. So gravity is acceleration. So I can say acceleration equals negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay. What do I know in the y direction at this point right here? What do I know in the y direction at the starting point? Anybody have any ideas of what I know at, in the y direction at the starting point? No ideas? Uh, Michelle, what zero? AJ, what zero? I agree something zero. What is, oh no, I disagree, disagree, I disagree. Nothing is zero. I was thinking of something else, sorry, I disagree. What happens right here in the Y direction? What did we just find? What did I ask you to find before? Initial velocity, good. So my initial velocity, yes, there you go. Yep, so my initial velocity in the Y is equal to 6.11 meters per second. All right, what about, what do I know at this point right here? What do I know at that point? The peak velocity is zero. Peak velocity is zero, so I can say VY, final velocity in the Y direction is equal to zero. So do you see, since I want the time it takes to go from here to here, right, the time up, I have to pick variables that describe that time. So I start, oh, this is my initial 
this is my final point. I'll be able to get the time it takes to go up there, right? So I, I make my list here. And now you look, what equation, so look at your equation sheet. If I have acceleration, initial velocity, and final velocity in time, what equation am I going to use here? Oh, I'll help you for this because it's the first one we're doing. I'm going to use this. Velocity equals velocity initial plus a t. Can I use that? Yeah. Do I have final velocity? Yeah. Do I have initial velocity? Yes. I have a, and I'm looking for t. I can use that. So I want you to plug in using these variables, plug in using these variables to solve for t. And give me an answer for time up. This is time up. Let me do it real quick. I didn't do it. Oops. Answer an email. <laughs> All right. What did you guys get? 0.62? Very good. Yeah, that's what I got. 0.62 seconds. So I'm going to write that in here. 0.62 seconds. All right. So let me ask you this question here. What's my total time it's going to be in the Air Force? So I want the total time it's going to be in the Air Force. See if you guys paid attention to me lecturing. What's the total time? Well, one person paid attention. Very good. You double it, right? So since, so think about it. On a long jump, you jump from the ground and land back on the ground. So it's the same height. So the time up is the same as the time down. So we just double the time here. And our total time is 1.24 seconds. Is everybody fall? Any, any issues with anything I've gotten so far? I'm going to pause here for questions. If you have any issues with these four answers. How did you get T up again? Uh, plugged into this equation, these numbers. So it would be 0 equals 6.11 plus negative 9.8 times T. I would subtract 6.11 over, and I would divide by negative 9.8. The negatives cancel out and I get 0.62. Does that make sense, Charlotte? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Everybody's good with the 1.24, right? Time up, time down, double it. All right. So now it says how far, right? Delta X is how far he's gone. So I use X. So now it's if you're looking for delta X, it should be obvious that you're going to be in X direction here. But I don't know, well, I know VOX. Do I know time? What time am I going to use here? What time am I going to plug in here? They may know. Am I going to use 0.62 or am I going to use 1.24? Good. Yeah, I'm going to use a 1.24 here. Because he's traveling in the X direction, right? He's traveling this way the entire time it's going up and down. So now I can find my delta X by plugging in. I got delta X equals 7.28 times 1.24. And go ahead, type in an answer when you get it. That's the easiest one. Nine meters, right? 7.28 times 1.24. Everybody see where I got those numbers? Is everybody okay with where I got those numbers? Yep. Okay. Now, it's asking for next. What is the highest point? So in other words, delta Y at the peak. So I want, so this represents, so this distance here from here to here is delta X, right? 
Does that make sense? Now I want the distance from here to here, which is delta y, the highest point. It should be obvious I'm using y variables. Let me ask you this. Do these variables right here describe a point from the bottom and a point to the top to give me delta y? Does that? Well, let's look. Velocity initial of 6.11. Where is velocity initial of 6.11? Well, it's right here at the start, right? It's at the start. Well, where is velocity final zero? It's right here, right? So does that describe my height? Yeah, that goes to my highest point. So now I can use, and I can use time. I can use time here is going to be 0.62. I can use that to find delta y. And you could use any equation here. You could do uh, delta y equals ot plus one half at squared. I'm looking for delta y. I get vo is six point one one. Time is point six two plus. One half a is negative nine point eight and t is point six two squared. So go ahead and solve for delta y. Yeah, I'm getting these equations from your equation sheet here. Type in, type in the answer when you get it. What is delta y? Anybody got a delta y? Or did you all give up? Good, I agree, 1.9 meters. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean, <laughs> I feel so bad for how fast we're going and just how much this is. It, it, I mean, it's, it has to be awful coming from a Zoom class, like a, just a video of me, and I'm not able to physically be there. Like, I'm trying to do all these hand things and the thing, but it's a lot easier. It's just, I feel awful for you guys, to be honest. I mean, it just sucks talking to nobody, but then like trying to learn this stuff that is, it's so physical, you know what I mean? Like you can physically see this stuff, but you can't physically see it when it's on a computer. You know what I mean? Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, <laughs> review, we're, we're just starting. <laughs> We're just starting, uh, but no, there is a pace that we have to, to keep, but there's some flexibility built in because think about it. There's kids that are actually going to school right now and that have been going to school and college board is a, you know, national test. So it's the national thing. So there is wiggle room. So I don't want you, like, we're not, we still have time. Like we're not gearing to review right now or anything like that. We still are just like, learning this okay so don't feel like the test is going to be like there's still wiggle room like i'm not going to give you a test if i don't feel like we're ready for it okay um now what i'm going to do and what we need to do is this okay so i'm going to make some assignments for you to do on uh because you, you know you have asynchronous day monday what i'm going to do is this i'm going to have i'm going to host a live session on monday you, this is not mandatory because I will post the recording of it, okay? So, but you're going to have to watch the recording because I will be doing some things in there that is necessary for you to learn. So, you don't have to attend the live session, but you have to watch the video. Does that make sense? So, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna post this in the thing so you don't have to remember this. But from 3:30 to 4:30, all right, I'll be doing a session, just like kind of like a review session, uh, stuff like that. Okay, and talking about and doing some problems and getting you used to it. Okay, uh, so if you have so like if you had issues with the one-dimensional motion problems, I'll answer those questions there. And then I will also, um, you know, keep going with projectile motion stuff. So again, that's optional to attend, but please watch it. I'll post it. You'll know when I post it and stuff like that. I will also hang around after 4.30 if you have lab questions. All right. If you have questions on your lab at for some like 4.30 to 5, I'll hang on there. I'll stop the recording and then we can, you can ask me questions about your lab if you have questions about that. Uh, again, I pushed the lab back to October 8th and I will, I will make an announcement today on what your, your uh, asynchronous work is going to be. I think I'm going to push the, I think I have to push the quiz back. So I'm going to push the quiz back to the 8th. So we're going to quiz next Thursday. So a week from today, we're going to have a quiz on this stuff. Okay. Now, um, what am I going to say? Uh, new students, you need to uh, log into my uh, AP classroom and uh, make sure you're in my class because the quizzes are going to go through AP classroom. Um, so if you can just, uh, the two new students, can, if you could just hang back for a little bit. Um, I'm going to send you the the, uh, the join code, so make sure you join my class. That way, you can have access to the quiz. Any questions on? I know I know you probably have questions. Like you, it probably was like super. Like I don't know what's going on uh, with projectile motion. I know we just started it. We got to do some problems here. We just I I literally did one one uh, what's it called uh, basic problem, and usually it takes me an entire block to go through this in class and we just busted through it in like no time at all. So I, I understand like you prior confused. So just don't get super frustrated. I'm going to answer questions. So again, Monday, 3.30 to 4.30, um, I'll be hosting a live session. You just to access it, just use my office hour link. All right. Uh, it will be recorded and I will post it and you need to watch it if you miss it. Okay. Any questions, I'm going to hang, I'll hang until my office hours, and then I'll transfer right into my office hours. So if you're good to go, I mean, just keep working on your lab right up, and then, uh, you know, just be doing your assignments and stuff like that, and you'll be, you'll be taken care of, okay? So I'll hang here if you have any questions, and if not, um, we'll see you next week, okay? Or I'll see you Monday, or I'll see you Monday or Tuesday, whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'll see you guys. This is honest. Uh, for the motion and one direction worksheet, number three and the number three and eleven on the answer key are uh, different answers because number three you did uh, change the units and then number eleven you solve for acceleration when it asked how far. Uh, let me see. Let me hold up. Uh, where is that linear motion? I think it's only number three and eleven. Okay, I'm pulling it right now. So, what do you say? Number three is wrong. Yeah, because you used uh, seventy-five kilometers over an hour instead of twenty-point eighty-three miles meter second. In the answer, oh, yeah, it is wrong. Yeah, so just use, yeah, just use a 20.83. Yes, you're right. Yeah, that is wrong. And then what other one did you say? Uh, number 11. Number 11. Uh, what did I do there? Let's see. 15 seconds times 15. 145. Uh, uh, the answer just asks, like, how far the thing goes. Like, oh, yeah, find acceleration. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, find delta x. I found a for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's good. Hey, Rick, Kenny, am I talking to Kenny? Yeah. Yeah. Good pickup. That was good. That was good. Very good. I was gonna email you a couple of days ago about it, but no, that's <laughs> fine. Yeah. yeah, I actually, I'm about to post a video of me doing the solutions. 
Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, either way, but that that's, that's two good pickups. Very good. Mr. Thomas, <sighs> it's your favorite. I, I, I'm missing a word in there. Yeah, I forgot what it, it's yeah. your favorite student, Tiffany. I was going to ask you, um, office hours are like the flex in the morning, right? What? Is that what, what are office, like I see your thing, but when it's is office school. hours? Yeah, oh, like, it's after school. Yeah, it's like, what are you talking about? This is like the fourth week of school. You don't even know when the office hours are? I'm just, you know, I'm like, oh. camping. And it's the, uh, it's, everybody has the same one. All teachers have the same one. So it's 2.50. Oh, I'm dumb. I just saw the schedule. I see it. I see it. Never mind. Okay. I got it. All right. Good. Good. All right. I'm going to dip out. All right. Dip out. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right. Who's next? Nobody wants to, nobody wants to go next. Are you guys just hanging out with me? Is that what you guys wanted to do? Any, anyway. I think you're muted. So we chilling. Oh, you're chilling? Anybody have a question? Vibing, Mr. Thomas. What did you say? We're vibing. Oh, nice. Uh, Michelle, how do we find percent error again? Um, did you, what, what do you need to find percent error again? What do you, what do you need to find percent error for? No, I didn't give you, you don't know the answer. So you can't find percent error if you don't have the known. So in other words, like you would have to know what the actual distance for the umbrellas was to compare what you got. Does that make sense? So if you knew the actual distance, then you could compare your percent, how much error was in your finding. Okay. All right. Uh, where are my, where are my new ones? All right. I'm going to need, I'm going to need massive assistance on, uh, your name. Last name Kim. I got the last name. <laughs> say you say your first name for me. It's Kim Chung. I just go by Eddie. If that's easy. Eddie? Yeah. Bang. That makes it easy. Nice. All right, Eddie, and then Farah. Is it Farah? Yeah, it's Farah. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, did you guys get my join code? I don't know if I said that. Said anything about that last time? Did I? No, I didn't. I wasn't here last time. This is my first time. Oh, this is your first time. And you, you, I just, you got thrown right into that. that. You must be like, yo, this class sucks. All right. <laughs> it doesn't suck. It just, it seems very difficult right now. <laughs> yeah. We, we're flying. I'm trying to, I'm trying my best to keep the pace, but it, it ain't working. Let me, uh, let me get um, your join code. So I need you to join the class on AP Classroom because we're going to do, um, what's it called, uh, our exams and um, quizzes on there because, uh, so I just, oh, I don't know, I want to type it privately. So there you go, I type, that's our, this, the X2 EV X3, that's our join code. It's just period six, year 20, that's the join code right there. So if you go to AP Classroom, all right, all right, uh, bye, Andrea, um, and type that in. You you get added to our class, and then when we do a quiz uh, in our exams, because I tailor our quizzes and exams to the um, what's it called, the AP test. So like, there's going to be a multiple choice section and the free response section each time we take a test. The quiz is just going to be multiple choice because it's just like practice. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, I have a quite problem. I already signed up for an AP classroom in my old school. For okay. Years, and it won't let me sign in. It says I have to contact someone. To okay, let me, uh, I'm going to write that down. Oh, I need a pen that works here. Yeah, I'll email our AP lady. 
because honestly, I have no, I don't know anything about it. Like the, bro, where are the pens at work? Here we go. Oh my God. All right, I'll remember. Uh, so I'll email our lady and figure out what you need to do for that. Um, because I, I have no idea. I so she can probably just uh, maneuver it and add you or something like that, okay? Um, so for this lab, you guys want to do, you guys need to do this lab because it's a summative grade and I don't want the test being your only summative grade. Are you guys from the county or are you guys moving out of like, from like out of state or something? Oh, I originally came from Michigan, then moved to Lake Braddock, then moved here. Okay, so you've been in the count, like you know how like the grade is like 90, 10, it's like 10% formative and then 90% summative. Does that make sense? Is it, have you heard that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, sweet. <laughs> All right, so newsflash, your grade, <laughs> which I think is so dumb. So this is not me. This is not Mr. Thomas's rule. This is the whole county's rules because I think it's so stupid. This is only my second year at Woodbridge. I, w I was at a different school. All right. Um, so all like the little work we do, like the homework and the quizzes, that only represents 10% of your overall grade. The 90% are the summative grades, which are the big lab reports and the exams. So this first whole, the whole first nine weeks, we're only having two summative grades, aka the lab and then our first exam. So that's why I'm saying you kind of got to do the lab. I'll extend the due date for both of you. Um, to later because I know well I mean probably it's your first day and then um, Eddie you, you know you just you went there and then we've been lecturing both days you've been here so um, I'm trying to think here what's the what's the lab about yeah I'm trying to think the best way because I'm gonna have to go to my office hours here in a second um, so let me show you this real quick. I'm going to show it to you real quick. I know you're going to be like, oh, this sucks. I, I, he just shows me so quickly. All right. Um, so you go into Canvas. Are both you in my Canvas class now? Do you guys have access to this? Yeah, yeah, we do. I do. Okay. Far, do you have access to this? Yes, no. Oh yeah, I have access to that. Okay, so go to modules, and then you go to your, um, oh, what you can do, great, here we go, here we go, here we go. If you go into Zoom recordings, right? So here's, I'll show you where it's at. It's right here, under module two, right here. Okay, this is a lab, it has all the links you need for it, all right? You go here, great, there's a lab, okay? If you go to Zoom recordings, you can watch what we've done in class. And let me see what day it was. It was right here. So you want to watch this one right here. This is me doing the lab with you. Thursday, 9, 24, 2020. Watch this video. That's what I did with all the kids in class. It's going to show you every step how to do the lab. Okay? I mean, that's a, instead of me trying to explain it like a minute, like that will walk you through it. Like I actually give you time and you can, you can have it up and just follow along with me. Okay? So... Okay. Try to start that, and then, like I said, if you have questions, come. You can come to uh, the Monday session from four thirty to five, and I'll be answering questions about lab then. Okay. Okay. All right. So, I mean, we'll get you caught up. Don't panic. Um, I'm just gonna honestly, I'm just gonna exempt you guys from all those stupid little assignments I've already assigned. That way, you just kind of start fresh right now. Is that, I mean, instead of bogging, I mean, I'm sure you got a ton of work. Like, I don't want to bog you down with all the other assignments. Like, I'd rather you just focus on what we're doing and try to, try to, you know, be good to go. Is that okay? Is that a good plan? Yeah, that's a good plan. So, all we have to do is the project thing. But... Yeah, so, so right now, we're going to start today. So, what you have to do is the, the start, start working on the lab and then anything I post from now on. Okay? Okay. All right, perfect. So I got to go to my office hours, but try that stuff and then come see me Monday if you have issues, okay? Okay, thank you. So can yep. I? Yeah, all right. Yep. All right, we'll see you guys. Okay, bye. Have a great day. You too.